Hello, my name is Ricky Figueroa, and today I will be talking about the spread of communism after World War II. I hope you enjoy. After World War II, the Soviet Union started to spread communism throughout the world. The countries that the Soviets took back from the Nazis were the first countries that became communist. These included Romania, Bulgaria, Poland, East Germany, Czechoslovakia, and Albania. Together, these countries formed the Eastern Bloc. Yugoslavia was also communist, but didn't politically agree with the Soviets. Winston Churchill became concerned about these events and informed Harry Truman, the U.S. president at that time, about the spread of communism. He delivered the Iron Curtain speech on March 15, 1946, where he used this term for the first time. This term meant to describe the ideology divisions, but also the physical wall between the Eastern and Western blocs, which stretched over thousands of kilometers and was especially strong in Germany, where the Berlin Wall made a symbol of this division. Many conflicts broke out between the West Bloc countries and the Soviet Union during the 20th century. Hello, I am talking with Ms. Sheila Volvari. She is my friend Evie's mother, and she lived in communist Hungary. What were some things that you liked while living in Hungary at that time? What I like, uh, everybody was basically really happy because uh, everybody had a job, but everybody had to work only eight hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, like parents, they had time for us, and every afternoon we did things with our parents, and the weekend we did fun things too. Mm -hmm. And what were some things you didn't really like, uh, you didn't really like at that time? What I didn't like that time, it was like we couldn't travel, we couldn't go wherever we want to uh, Europe, or like if we want to come to the United States, we had to go for a visa, but most of the time we didn't get it. And we, I, I, usually, I think I was a little bit older that time, but uh, we couldn't uh, buy whatever we want, we had to buy everything from Russia, even we couldn't really watch American movies, you know, it was all everything on a TV like from Russia or a language at a school. We couldn't choose whatever we want to learn, you know, we had to choose Russian language. So it was kind of limited uh, what we can do. Thank you. So, uh, thank you for answering my questions. You're very welcome, Ricky. Asia was also facing problems with communism. China was the first Asian country to switch to communism. In 1911, China overthrew their monarchy in a revolution. After this, the Chinese chose to be a republic, but their industry was very weak. A man named Mao Zedong believed in Marxism, the philosophy behind communism. He grew an army of men who didn't like the Kuomintang, which was the party who believed in democracy. Mao Zedong led a revolution which ended in 1947. The communists won the war, and the Kuomintang fled to Taiwan, where they are now. In 1949, Mao Zedong developed Maoism, a form of Chinese communism. China and the Soviet Union were close allies in the largest communist lands. There were more communist countries in Asia, including Vietnam, Laos, and North Korea. Vietnam and Laos were both ruled by France. Ho Chi Minh, the North Vietnamese leader, didn't like the French ruling them, so they started a communist revolution. This led to the Vietnam War. The Viet Cong, which is the name of the North Vietnamese army, captured Saigon, the South Vietnamese capital. Vietnam finally became a communist state. While these Asian countries remained communist, communism fell in East Europe. It started with the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. East and West Germany became one again. People could finally move through all of Germany and families were reunited once again. Many Eastern countries saw what happened and thought they could be free too. The citizens of the Eastern countries led revolutions to stop communism. The Soviet Union used to stop these revolutions quickly. They couldn't do any of this anymore because they went bankrupt. 
This happened because Moscow supplied all of Russia and the smaller states. They couldn't compete with bigger economies like the U.S. and Great Britain. Later on Christmas Day of 1991, President Gorbachev announced that the Soviet Union had collapsed.